So I want to show you this today and um, I don't normally do lessons with brushes that I've purchased because I don't like for people to have to buy brushes in order to do my lessons. So um, I'm making an exception because these are fantastic brushes. Whoops, I just bumped my shelf here. And the brushes I'm using are Lisa Glam's Aqua Real Procreate brushes. So if you have those, that's what we're using today. If you don't have those, uh, if you don't want to go grab them, I don't know how much they are. Um, but if you don't have them, I, I would recommend going ahead and following along with different brushes um, and just make it not watercolory or, um, you know, just do whatever you want. So when you do watercolor, well, when I do watercolor in Procreate, it's not really like painting with watercolor. So it's it's more just like manipulating what you are putting down on the paper to make it look like watercolor. And one of the biggest things for this piece that I did, pardon the barks, casual Instagram live. <laughs> this piece, um, these brushes are transparent obviously. And um, so I, instead of, you know, if you were doing real watercolor, you would leave negative spaces where you're going to add color later and instead we're going to be erasing the spaces that end up being underneath for example um, these twiggy areas um, go underneath everything and they do show up and we just need to erase them on this one i used um, a mask layer mask this is a very layer heavy project here so that is one of the uh, downsides to uh, this method, I guess, that I use. So hopefully everybody can follow along with that. Um, oh, somebody just asked. So, yep. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Sarah. Sarah's answering uh, that they are Lisa Glanz watercolor brushes. Um, so I've, I've gone through a, a little bit of um, some fun stuff with these brushes. And so what you need to do is grab one of her canvases. I keep coming back to the chiffon and then duplicate it and then you can take it out of the group if you want um, we just well i guess it doesn't matter what shape if you want to crop it down to a square for instagram um, so colors i have a skillshare class oh gosh i'm trying to remember which class this is in if you follow me on Skillshare and you have for a while, last fall I have classes that I have an Autumn 2 palette and this is a palette that is fabulous. I use it a lot and I'm gonna use it today. So I'll just help you pick colors along the way um, as, if you don't have that palette. So here's my brushes and we're gonna do a sketch first. So pick any color for a sketch. I've got some layers under here. I always like to start with a bunch of layers. <clears throat> I do stop every once in a while and look at questions. So go ahead and add your questions to the comments and I'll look at those in a minute if somebody else doesn't answer. So let's kind of just put a circle. I'm gonna be drawing darker so that it shows up on camera. So that's gonna be sort of our, our just start, you know, wreath area there. You can just stay on that layer or go to a new one. I'd probably go to a new one so I can move this around, but I'm going to start with some of my bigger elements like my pumpkin. So let's just, let's just pretend like that circle isn't there right now. For a little gourd type pumpkin, just draw a squashed circle a little bit. So this is just a sketched of just a squash to this is kind of at an angle so, so hopefully I'm, I'm trying not to turn I can't turn the iPad so and I'm trying not to turn the canvas too much but just this kind of a little bit squashed circle whoops and then near the top let's put another little squashed circle there so I'm gonna zoom way in so you can see what I'm doing here we're not gonna look at a reference photo for this we're gonna make kind of a an oval or ellipse right here 
and it's kind of roundy and it's going to go down below our circle a little bit. Right there, my hands are a little shaky. And then we'll do another one that's just kind of coming off of this one off to the side, starting on our little tiny oval up here off to the side. And we're not going to come down all the way to here, just kind of come down to uh, a little bit up from the bottom here and do the same thing on the other side. It's okay if there are different uh, uh, shapes, widths the fun thing about these gourds and I'm leaving a bit of gap up here they're not just all meeting in one point and then let's do another one this one kind of is already its own over here and over here so I'm kind of curving in at the bottom there and then let's just make a little curve up here and a little curve up here those will kind of be hidden behind the stem in a second so if I erase that initial sketch, you can see what I have here. And I really could erase this little oval up here too. And now let's go with a little stem. So with the stem, um, we're just gonna kind of curve off and come down to one side curve off and come down to the other side, make it a little narrower at the top. And then down here, just kind of kind of uh, make it look like it's going into these little crevices, um, the crevices that these sections of the pumpkin make. If hopefully that makes sense. And then finishing that off, just kind of make a cut end, and then you can do some curly cues here. And on another layer, let's draw a leaf. Oh, Sarah, the palette is what you're, I think you're saying the palette uh, autumn two is in my pumpkin mushroom and acorn class. That makes a lot of sense. Thank you. <laughs> I should have figured that out. Okay. So for a leaf, you can go look at reference photos if you want. Um, I'm just going to be super simple and make a flat leaf. You can get creative and make curly leaves, but here's my main stem and then It'll be a bit of an oak leaf. So we'll go whoosh, 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 whoosh. <laughs> Something like that. I know I'm trying to be quick with the sketchy part. Yeah, that looks good. All right, and then the veins will be in there later. So we have a leaf. You could do that a couple of times with slightly different squattier ones, or you can duplicate that. I did that on a separate layer. Sorry, I forgot to mention that part. And you can rotate it so that it's kind of this way and put it on free form, and then you can squash it that way. And you can do all sorts of things to make it look like a different leaf than the original one, so you can Put your liquify on push and kind of um, push things around a little bit and just kind of change the shape so that it looks a little different different enough that it isn't just a straight up duplicate and then of course you can rotate it too let's see so acorns we're going to go to another layer acorns can be super simple you can just draw a u and then i like to have the little tip as well and then at the top of the U make a curved line up like that and then at the above that so that whatever however tall you want your little cap to be make another curved line and then on the sides make them come down the sides a tiny bit so I'll zoom in here so it kind of comes this curved line on the side comes down further on the side of the acorn 
and then this curve line comes down to meet it. And then I'll erase a little part at the top here to make a little stem. You can get as detailed as you want with this. Um, this is a very textured uh, part of an acorn with the little scaly bits. Down here, there's a lot of um, striations that kind of go follow the curve. So we'll call that good for now. Well, I don't mean to have those there. <laughs> and what else? Oh, a mushroom and some berries. Okay, so the mushrooms are gonna be super simple. I think we'll do those later when, when we're uh, finished assembling this layout a little bit. So I'm gonna turn all of these on. They're all on separate layers. And I have my ring that's gonna be my wreath. And I'm just gonna um, start placing these where I think I want them. And I might make things a little smaller if they're gonna be overpowering. Definitely these leaves need to be smaller. And then if you've ever made a wreath, you know, they all, everything kind of stems you know, it has to be attached by a wire. So, you know, think about where those might actually be attached when you're doing it, when you're placing stuff. And I'm not gonna go off the edge in this piece. My acorn is quite big. I'm gonna have a couple acorns, I think. So I'll duplicate that. It's simple enough to go ahead and just draw another one if you wanna do uh, one that doesn't look identical. Or again, you can change the boundary box so that it's kind of lined up with it and put it on free form. And then you can change the width of it like that. All right, I'm liking that. So I'm gonna merge everything except for the circle. And then let's think about, I liked having those little berries, um, the little red berries. Sorry, I was just checking my, can't quite see. Instagram's being weird on the browser. So the rest is kind of filler. So um, think about where you might want your mushrooms. You can start adding those now. Um, I don't know, I usually see wreaths that are a little top heavy or side heavy and bottom heavy and then a little more sparse on one side. So however you want to fill it, now's the time to sketch those things in. So if you wanna have mushrooms, I'm on a new layer in case I want to change anything. I might want those mushrooms to go hide behind the leaf a little bit, maybe. So for the mushrooms, we're just gonna, you know, use our imagination. You kind of can just make any shape of mushroom you want. If you want to see into the mushroom, have the stem go up like that into all the way up to this part. If you don't want to look into the mushroom, you can do something that's more like this. Hmm. I think I almost need just a little baby mushroom down here. Something like that. And then think about if you want anything tall. I had some wheat up in here, so I might add some, some long bits here to do some wheat later. And then I also had just some leaves, some kind of branches of leaves, not these big leaves. So that's another thing to think about. And that's a super easy thing to add later. So I don't wanna necessarily draw it 
exactly how I'm going to use it, but maybe just sketch in where I might want to put that and leave some of the twiggy area uh, exposed. What else? You could add another pumpkin too, or gourd, or whatever you want to call that. So now the little berries, the little red berries, I think are important because they add a nice amount of color. So I think it might, it's, it's getting a little busy to look at in sketch form. So I'm gonna just decrease the opacity and go on a new layer and think about where I might want those berries. Maybe the end of the stem can be hiding behind this pumpkin and you can place them so that they're also hiding the end of the leaf stem, things like that. And have some over here and also some over here. Have them in at least three places and it'll look nice and balanced. I am just sloppily doing the, the sketch for this, this part. And then maybe I'll have some coming up here and have them be behind the acorns. Oops, put it down here. Yeah, I don't know if I like that. We'll have to see. Okay. I think that's going to be good. How long did that take us? Okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and merge. You can, if you want, you can erase this sketch of the circle that goes underneath stuff. So that's up to you. Just kind of come through on the circle layer. It depends on how you work. If that's going to be too busy for your eye to see that back there all the time, you're going to want to get rid of that. And then I'm going to merge all those layers. And I have my sketch layer. So now I'm going to add layers and come underneath. Decrease the opacity quite a bit, as much as you can. I'm going to leave it high for the camera. I'm going to see the delay here and make sure that um, you can see that. Wow, there's a pretty big delay. I can't see it yet. <laughs> All right, well, I'll just keep going. So I usually start with that twiggy circle. So let's go ahead and do that. I was just considering maybe not doing that. So let's pick a brown that is over in our oranges. And then we're going to go kind of light and more towards gray. And we're going to go to the round brush all rounder of Lisa Glanz's brushes and make sure we're not on. I'm going to alpha lock the sketch layer so I don't accidentally write on it. And check my color. I am intentionally using less saturated colors, so this is a good color, I think, for the twig. And this part is really up to you. Um, I don't want to make it super smooth, so I'm intentionally bumping my hand around and changing the pressure. You don't need to worry too much about doing it all in one stroke especially if you start and end underneath something else. And don't follow that circle exactly. I probably followed it too closely actually for that first round and now it's going to be hard to weave a little bit here. And you can always come back later and add little side branches that jet off of it. Hello to the people who are joining. Um, we're using Lisa Glenn's Aqua Aquareal brushes. 
All right. Oh, I guess that layer needed to be down low. So we're going to come back to it and basically for every step, actually let's do it right now because for every step, this is kind of the process. So now I'm going to add a clipping mask and I'm going to put it on multiply. And then I am going to just get a little bit darker of a color. I also like to go to this Bloom's Accents for painting and smudging brush. Let's go ahead and do that. Make it kind of small. And this is where you can just get some more variation in your color here and there. So for sake of um, boredom for you guys watching, I'm not going to go through all of this as precisely as I would if I were doing a really nice piece that I was spending a lot of time on. And then play around with the other brushes. Um, you can go back to that one and the one we initially used and just kind of add a darker line along uh, one side of it as well. All right, so we're gonna call that done. You can merge, a lot of times blend modes won't merge very well um, onto the layers they're clipped to. They'll, it'll give a different look. But I believe Multiply lets you merge, so let's try it. Yeah, it, it didn't change the look. So if you're getting short on layers, then um, it's okay to merge if you think you're not gonna need to change something. I'm going to check how many layers I have, canvas information, and layers. So for me, I have a maximum of 39 layers, and this is like the newest iPad Pro, so it is, pro you probably have, if you don't have a Pro especially, you probably have a lot fewer layers, so that is something to consider. And also you can uh, shrink the size of the canvas, it's a pretty big canvas. 13 by 16 inches. It's pretty big. So that's why you go into crop and resize right here. Probably try it before you start next time though. I just exited. All right, let's do the pumpkin. The pumpkin's fun. So I'm going to turn this off for now because it kind of is in our way. And you can make your pumpkin orange, yellow, anything. Let's go to a greenish, bluish, really really light and over towards the grays we're on a new layer and we are on the all-rounder again and i'm just going to test my color i want a pretty light color because i can't go lighter so i'm going to add more color to this later but i i'm not going to add white to it so i need to start really light and all i'm doing actually i'm going to go darker so you can see it better but you should go lighter. <laughs> I'm going to fill in the whole pumpkin and I'm going to try to do it in one stroke. Just do right over the stem. The reason why the stroke, one stroke is good is because the, um, the blend mode of the brush itself, it'll show an overlap. All right, oh, I gotta um, stop talking because I'm gonna forget to tell you something. So I'm leaving some gaps. So where you think you might want lighter colors, leave a couple little gaps like that. I'm still in one stroke. I'm gonna leave another gap over here. And my color, my light is coming from this side, I've decided. <laughs> so let me turn the sketch layer off so you can see. Well, it's still kind of hard to see, but there, this brush gives you a nice little thick edge around the outside and same with in here. So if I just tried to erase spots from inside, um, it wouldn't have that little edge that's nice. And then if you accidentally lift the pen and then go back down, and this isn't a very dark color, so it's not that big of a deal, but you can smudge. I usually smudge with this bloom or this wet accent. You can smudge that out, um, but 
try not to have to smudge around the edges because you really want that little edge there all the way around your piece. Oops, sketch layer back on. I'm gonna turn my sketch a little lighter here. And now I'm gonna go to a clipping mask and put it on multiply and go to a slightly darker color. I'm gonna go down a little more blue and I'm still on the all rounder. So if my light is coming from this side, this oval right here is going to be a little darker over here. So I'm just going to add some color and then I'm going to smudge it. Just darkening it a little over here. Mm, I might want to darken it a little bit more. So the base layer that we laid down is um, is going to show us. It's it's going to hold on to that texture, like the edges and things like that. And so now we can add on top and get some more details. So for the sharp edge, that's the outside of this kind of ball here. I'm just going to come along in one stroke down the side and then I'm going to smudge this side of it. I'm going to leave the sharp edge on that side. I should, I need to, um, I was too close to the line here. Hold on a sec. So I'm coming down. Whoops. I'm lifting my pencil. So this is the shadowed side of this piece. So I'm going to smudge so that it almost looks like it's you know wet on wet and it's gone that way darker over here and that way kind of uh, wet on dry right here <laughs> I'm gonna do the same thing for the edge of this piece this piece on this side maybe I have that too small too big I mean And over here, so I'm just kind of defining these little grooves. And we're going to have one more step of defining these with a layer. Um, another layer on the pumpkin here. Oops, I did not do that one very well. You can zoom out and look at that. All right, and then I'm gonna add another clipping mask. And let's do color burn. And now we need a gray and we're gonna switch to the bloom accents. You could also start using some of these stamps. I love this bloom stamp three, <laughs> although I know people who don't like blooms in their watercolor, so it just depends on what you want. So this is gonna allow me to just, it'll darken everything. So it's only truly darkening uh, it's not darkening the lighter colors as much because that's just how color burn works. But I can get some more colors there. And then you can be changing up colors a little bit throughout this as well. Can go to a little darker. So if there's some areas where you really want to concentrate some color, it's a good time to do that. And I'm going to go to a, a layer on top of that. We're not using that many layers per item, so don't worry too much. And I am going to pick a brown and kind of go over to gray, maybe make it a little dark and come back to the all rounder and get my stem and I am going to probably erase some of this. I'm 
twirly, twirly, twirly. And you can see that pumpkin needs to be erased. You just need to erase from the base layer that everything's clipped to. You can use the sketch pencil. I'm not going to erase all of it, just the parts that were super obvious. Now you can do the same thing on this. You can add clipping masks and add some more details to that if you want. But we're going to move on. There's your pumpkin. So now we can use these same layers, the pumpkin layer, with a multiply layer on top and a color burn layer above that and come over here to some other parts of our drawing to add um, those same layers to those. So I could, anything that isn't touching. So I'm not going to want to do these berry branches since they go under the pumpkin, but I could easily do these two leaves and even the acorns all on this same layer. So we're on the layer that has the, the very base layer of the pumpkin. And let's go to a nice orange. Again, we want to go really light and we're on the all rounder. Test my color. I'm going to go really light so I can add more color later, but still keep some light areas if I want them. I picked up my pencil. <laughs> it's easier to pick it up when you're in the middle because now the part that I need to smudge is just down the middle. And it's really hard to see right now, but you will be able to see it later if you don't smudge it now. And you can smudge it later once you do start seeing it. Oh, I forgot. So leave some white areas, just like we did on the pumpkin, if that's the watercolor look you're going for. And I'm going to take a, a stop really quick and see if there's any questions. Let's see. I'll try to get some interesting looking white spots in here. <laughs> Vanessa. Vanessa used 55 layers today in painting from a girl who used to hate using layers. Uh, you know, the layer thing is fascinating to me. Um, and by the way, if you don't know Vanessa paints, uh, Vanessa there is um, a fabulous watercolor artist as well as she makes and sells watercolors. Um, and she has Skillshare classes. Um, Vanessa, I never used Photoshop, so I never got used to a ton of layers. And then when I started using Procreate, I actually had such an old iPad Pro that it turns out I got the one with, I don't like the shape of this white spot. I got the one with uh, the fewest gigs of RAM, which was never talked about back then. And uh, had so I had the fewest layers in Procreate. So I never really got used to using a lot of layers. All right, so you know what? We can go ahead and let's just go ahead one thing at a time and finish these leaves. So now we already have our layers set up here, right? So we can go to our color or our multiply layer and start playing with colors and textures. Um, again, great time to start using blooms. If you like blooms, watch this. <gasps> Isn't that pretty? So I usually, my next step is usually to go to the Bloom Accents brush and start adding colors. You can get some yellows on here if you started light enough. We can add texture later. There's some splatter brushes down here. So I'm not going to worry about that kind of texture yet. You can even get some greens on here. anything you want, as dark as you want. You can add, if you need more layers, even though, you know, that's 
connected to the pumpkin. You can add another clipping mask and it won't affect your pumpkin. I think I need more oranges actually. Ooh. You can also, if you, oh now, oh, Vanessa's watching and I just realized, well, wait a minute, this is a true water, watercolor artist watching. I am not a true watercolor artist at all. So Vanessa, you'll have to correct me if I say something that isn't right about watercolors. So I see people in lessons dab in uh, heavier areas of um, more opaque areas of color so that it can bloom out, right? This stamp goes down randomly every time. So I usually just play around with it until I get it into a spot that I like it. But I'm not liking this color for it right now. All right, so you have the general idea of doing your leaves. If you want to go to the color burn layer and do some more um, adding more texture with the color burn layer and going to gray, that might be a better way to add um, some of the blooms, a darker gray, because then it will pick up all the different colors. So that, that gray on the color burn layer is green over here and red or orangey over here and so on. She also, she being Lisa, um, will take one of these bigger stamps, they get really big, and she'll put it over the whole thing. You get some cool looks like that. You're gonna need to make sure, so here I've um, overlapped some orange onto my pumpkin, and you can just get rid of that really easily. Um, the pencil brush, oh, you know what? I can't get rid of that really easily. Well, that's not the right layer for when. Um, it's going to affect, so I forgot to tell you, so you need to be careful of um, when you're adding the color that um, kind of crazily like that. You have to be careful if you're on layers that are connected to other things that you're not overlapping those. So I just went ahead and erased that and we're going to call that good. And let's see, let's do a stamp over here. So that's fun. Fun, fun. I'm going to check questions. Thank you, Vanessa. All right. I'm going to come back down to our base layer and go into the acorns now. Acorns are kind of more ready orange, and I'm trying to get a variety here. So we have this really gray brown here. I meant ready brown, not ready orange. Test that one. No, I don't like that. All right. So I'm going to do the same thing just to the lower part of the acorn and I'm staying in the lines. Oh, and I'm seeing that my stamp on the color burn layer for when I stamped over here is showing up right here. And that's fine if you like it, or you can just erase it right now. Oh, leave some white areas. Oh, we could actually go to the mushroom. So I can't do the cap on those acorns. I need to do those on a separate set of layers. And how long is this so far? So we're about 40 minutes in. Let's see. I'm going to go ahead and go to a super pale, creamy color and just do the stems of the mushrooms. I don't remember how I uh, attached those to the wreath. And then I can do the caps of the acorns and the caps of this uh, mushrooms on the same layer later. 
All right, again, go to your multiply layer. I'm gonna go back to this brown I had. I'm just gonna come down to the bloom accents. Being careful not to, oh, there's my garage door. Being careful not to um, do accents on here that I don't want on there. I get a little concentrated color down there. However much texture you want. I think I like those the way they are. All right. We'll just finish the acorns and the mushrooms and then I'll show you um, what I do with the twiggy branches there. So for the acorn tops and the mushroom tops, I can actually just come right to the, the layer that I used for this stem here of the pumpkin. I'm going to go to a, a kind of a more gray brown from what we used here. See if I like that. Oh, I need the right brush. Back to my all-rounder. Um, trying to think of what color those are. Are they lighter or darker? I think they might be lighter. I like them lighter. So I'm on orange, and I'm kind of on a super light orange, brownish over towards the gray. And I'm being really precise here. Super pressure sensitive. Oops, I lifted my pencil. And I didn't get my stem there. So I'm gonna smudge a little bit to smudge those overlaps. And I'm gonna erase this. It's tiny enough, I'm not gonna worry about it. So we can add a layer above that, turn it into a clipping mask, put it on multiply, go to slightly darker color, Go to Bloom Accents and get some more color. I'm going to go back down to the main layer that the caps were on and do the mushroom caps. So I'm going to pick a kind of a orangey red but over towards grayish pink. Back to the all-rounder. So this one's gonna be simple because this one is just on top of the stem. But this one, I'm gonna go ahead and, I just lifted my pencil. I'm gonna go ahead and fill in this whole top. Oh, leave white spots if you want. I keep forgetting that. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and leave, um, make a little red also back here. I really need to decrease my size. So you can see where I've overlapped when I lifted my pencil. And the same thing goes for those. Multiply on the layer above, come to a darker color, go to a stamp or the other brushes to get some more color added to these. As far as the inside of this goes, you could have put it on this same layer. You could put it on its own layer uh, it just really depends on how much, um, how many layers you're working with. So if I come back down to this layer, and I'm just going to turn all the texture layers off for a second. I'm just going to select this color. That's the only way to select it accurately. So that's one thing you could do to just fill in 
that space down there. And then you would need to smudge where the stem meets that. And then you can add more details on a clipping mask on top of that. So if we come down and turn on our twiggy branch layer, you can see how you can, you can see it all through there. So you really have to make sure you are happy with where everything is before you start erasing. So you can directly erase um, where the branch is showing underneath these things, or you can use a mask. So if you have a spare layer, go ahead and use a mask by tapping on it and tapping mask. And then on this layer that just attached to it, when you use black on that layer, it's going to look like you're erasing. And then if you goof and you want to have it back, you just add white back to the layer. So it did automatically go to black, but you can select whatever brush you want. I just went to the pencil brush and now I'm drawing in black, but it looks like I'm erasing. So then you would go through and just erase everywhere where this branchy layer is showing through your work. And then if you decide to move that pumpkin just a scooch to the side, right, then you're going to have, if you erased, then you're going to have the gaps showing. If you used a mask, then you can just come back in and um, uh, add black to the mask layer to fill that back in. I hope that makes sense. I have a beginner class on Procreate that explains those types of things. Um, really quick, I also want to show you if you do want to do something like move one item, we have multiple items on one layer. So this layer has the leaf and the pumpkin. You need to select all of the layers that are clipped to it, even a layer that isn't clipped to it, like the the um, stem on the pumpkin here, select that too. And then you can actually select all of it. It looks like the clipping masks disappear when you do that, but they are there. And then you can move it. And then when you deselect it, everything pops back up. So that is something you can do. But it's just easier to figure out where everything is before you start. All right, so back to the mask layer. Um, also with masks, it erases in different opacities if you use different shades of grays. So you can use black, white, um, and gray, different shades of gray. I don't want to spend a bunch of time on this part. I should have used a bigger brush. <laughs> so I'm going to pause and see if there's any questions in just a second. Oh, it looks so pretty on the screen. <laughs> All right, it doesn't look like there's any questions. Um, you can see I, I didn't spend much time on my little leaf stem down here. I can cover that up with these berries later. So um, I think I'm going to, because this is taking a while, even though Instagram lets you go over an hour, I don't think that people are gonna want to um, watch much more than that. So I'm gonna, well, should I briefly talk? So the, the same thing with the berries applies, um, ooh, you know what, that's gonna be tricky. So the, the berries, I want them on top of this leaf, but I want them under the pumpkin, and the leaf and the pumpkin are on the same layer, so I'll have to just end the stem right at the pumpkin so it looks like it's under the pumpkin. Um, and I can do that, actually, I can even do that on this layer. So I can keep going with just these two groups of layers we've got. Um, I feel like I was in the middle of a sentence and then I changed my train of thought, sorry. Um, I was gonna switch to a, a different, the, um, the leafy branches up here, but I'll show you one of the berries. So we need to go back to the all-rounder. So I'll just do one over here. I I want 
a really dark color actually for the berry stems just to have some variety and I can add more I'm gonna erase that end right there later I can add more um, with layers um, clipping masks and make it darker later so but I, I do want to start out a little dark So where all of these little branches meet up, you can decide if you want to <clears throat> blend those together and try to stay in the lines of the branches. Um, they might be small enough to not even have to worry about. So I do that on a separate layer from the berries all right, so we were on the layer that had the acorn caps and some of the mushrooms, but now I need a, a layer on top of all that, so I need a brand new fresh layer, and I'm gonna go to a nice bright red. Oh, and this is also where you can leave some white space showing. I'm gonna add a berry here that doesn't have a stem. Maybe the berry is this the stem is kind of under that berry, leaving some little white spaces. I started out really big. <laughs> I'm just going to grab this one. All right, and then I need clipping masks on my berries. So you can go around and do all of your berries and stems on those two layers. The stems on one, the berries on another. Clipping mask, multiply, and a much darker color. And I'm going to go back to my bloom accents. So it's totally up to you how dark you want these berries to be. I'm just adding some darkness on one side of each one, kind of the underside. So I can't really see them on top of that leaf and that is because our colors are transparent. So just like we erased the twigs you might want to erase the leaves behind these two, or you can um, use another mask on that layer. It's really up to you. That didn't make that big of a difference. The colors are probably just too similar. So that's something to think about too. All right, so um, with the berries, I, I do kind of like, uh, the look of the dark brown like you did wet on wet and the dark brown bleeds up into the berries there at the stem so to do that i'm still on the multiply layer or go back to the multiply layer and i'm on a dark brown and i'm on the bloom accents brush and i'm just going to sort of add some brown down here now i can see my stem underneath that layer and i can erase that you can also go back to the berry layer itself. That <laughs> berry is not even touching the stem. So that's just a little bit. I don't know. I like that. And add as many details as you want. And then let's see. I'll go to a new layer and let's switch to a different brush. So the round brush subtle duo color. You can tap that and go to color dynamics and you can turn off all the color dynamics. Um, I believe she had some on. It looks like I've already turned them off. It changes colors a little bit. And then let's go to a green, something that looks good with that teal. Probably a little bit more green. I'm on a brand new layer. 
And I want my grass stem or my, my leaf stem to be there first so I can see where my leaves attach. And then on for this one, you have to really practice starting light, pressing and go and ending light. And ending in the right spot. <laughs> and I think everybody who does watercolor knows you have to practice these types of strokes even with watercolor. Ah. And I apparently can't talk at the same time. So that is how you would do that. And then you can also um, do, you can do the same thing. You can do clipping masks with these as well and get some more color variation and add some dark areas along the stem that bleed up into the leaves and all sorts of things. So that's what I did for that. And then let's see, I have my list. Pumpcorn, pum, pumpkin, acorn, mushroom, berries, wheat, leaves, and stems. So with the wheat, I'll just show you what I did with the wheat. You can see it. You'll probably be able to just look at my other one and see what I've done. <laughs> so I just did a stem. It looks like I added another color onto that stem. So it's two-toned. I just did some simple streaks and some more simple little lines that were just sort of overall in the shape of wheat. Lots of little probably sketch pencil lines there. Oh, we didn't do leaf veins. So you can come through on another layer and add veins to your leaves as well. I added some more details to the stem there. And I'm not a letter, so I used a font and then I traced it and then I removed the font. And that font's name is I have one here where I, <laughs> I need to, let's see, oh, Dancing Script. Oh, look, I did my acorns in inverted way. I did light down here and dark up there. I did a much more toned down green for the leaves there. And then also know that Lisa Glanz also has um, lessons. So when you buy the brushes, there's a couple videos for um, how she uses and does the leaves. So she does a single leaf and it's the same thing I do. She uses the um, all rounder as the base and then adds textures and stuff on top. And oh, and you know, the splatter and stuff, you can, you can experiment with the splatter. I'm not a good splatterer. I, um, I like too much precision, <laughs> so <laughs> I'm not good at the splatter. Hopefully that helps. I know we didn't use, whoops, I just bumped my camera. We didn't use a lot of brushes. Um, my favorite is the all rounder and the, the subtle duo color. The duo color, when you get it, it'll have, um, pressure changing ability with, um, as you go, right. And you press harder, it'll change color a little bit. So, and when you use a lighter color, it gets sort of faded in the middle. So those leaves will be sort of lighter in the center than they are on the outside. All right, guys. Well, hopefully that was helpful and fun. And I know I didn't completely finish, but I think that it's enough to get you started on um, how to make it yourself. See you later.